want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Bring about salvation because we have cousins and nieces and nephews and brothers and sisters that need salvation. So yes. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus yes, that right now that you will touch yes. their life, oh God. Yes, Change their hearts yes, so that they will know you as Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Yes, we thank you, God, that you're doing it for them right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, I renew my wife right now in the name of Jesus as she poured out in praise and worship, oh God. Father God, I pray, Lord, that everything that she spoke shall come to pass, oh God. That something new is happening for you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, you said your word, behold, I will do a new thing for you. And we believe in the prophetic word that you're going to do a new thing right now. Yes, God. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Father God, that uh, you said in your word that uh, we are new creatures in you. Oh, yeah. So Father God, for those who need a renewing in their heart, mind, and spirit, allow them to be able to be new creatures yes, in you. Yes, God. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. I just need somebody to type in the comments. Hallelujah. I need somebody to type in the comments. Thank you, Jesus. I need someone to type in the comment section and just say something new is happening for me and my family. Yes. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. And listen, today we're talking about love and family today. Ooh. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad for everything that, uh, you know, for me and my wife. So for some of you who don't know, we have been married now for four years. Yes. It'll be five this upcoming June. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so last year we did our love and marriage, I mean love and family um, for the entire month of February. And I noticed, I said, we didn't do it this year. So I said, let's just take a day out yes. just to talk about um, love and family. And I wanted to start on a subject. You were just talking this morning a little bit, um, just in our time or whatever, uh, about singleness. Allow people to know that who are even single, um, that they, they still are loved. And they still, um, if, if they have uh, interest in being married and everything else, that there's somebody out there to love them and love them for who they are. And so I want to talk just a little bit about that. Um, but first, let me introduce um, us, for those who don't know. Um, I, myself, uh, I, uh, we don't, I don't have a biological children. Right. Uh, we believe in God to yeah. move on our behalf. Uh, my wife does have a daughter, but we don't believe in that stepdaughter stuff. And all right. like, what they call them, golden child or... Bonus, bonus children. children. Now we don't do the bonus. No, I don't do the bonus. No. <laughs> and if you ask my daughter, and if you was to say something like stepdaughter or this and that, oh, bubble, she will have a serious issue. Yeah. Just to let you know. So, um, but I was a single parent, a foster father for five or six years. I lost count. It's been so long ago. So uh, I do have an adopted son and I have godchildren and oh God and all the kids and oh Lord Jesus help me. But being a single person, so I had gotten to the point in my life when I felt like that, um, yeah, I was never going to get married. I was never going to get married. No, uh, the people who I was interested in 
Uh, I wasn't interested in them. The ones you were interested the one, in? The one, the one that, the one that, I'm sorry, the ones that were interested in me, I was not interested in them. Right, right, right. And so it was like, God, you know, this right here is just not going to work. Hey, God bless you. And so, uh, so that was uh, me, myself, and then you also talk about your testimony or? Oh, well, I mean, well, just about everybody, I believe, knows my testimony, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I've been married before, and, you know, it, I was married to my daughter's father, you know, I went through the whole, I, I did it right, you know, in the beginning, I really did. A lot of people don't know that side, you know, they think, oh, you're a PK kid, so you're gonna always be like a heathen, but that's not true. You know, um, when I got married to my daughter's father, I was a virgin. Mm -hmm. I did it according to how we were taught. Yeah. You know, and we were taught to be virgins. Mm -hmm. We were taught to save ourselves from marriage. We were taught to have children after marriage. So honestly, I did all of that. I did it in the order that it was supposed to be done. But had I known what I know today, I would have never married him. I married him at a very young age. I was like 20 years old when I married him. I'm 41 now, and we have been divorced well over uh, 14 years. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, I was with him for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And see, people don't, in the church house don't talk about the signs. Yes. They don't talk about the red flags. Uh -huh. We're taught to save yourself as ladies for marriage. Mm -hmm. That they, they teach the guys that, but they're not really hard on the men right. about saving themselves because they do look at it as men gonna be men. Mm -hmm. But in the women, you know, as soon as you mess up, you know, you, you have that label of being a loose woman. I'm just going to say loose woman, yes, but they yes. call you other things. Yes. <laughs> so you get the label of loose. Um, but, you know, so I was always made to be taught to save myself for marriage, and that's what I did. I right. saved myself for marriage. But had I known the red signs and the red flags and the do's and the don'ts of life, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have never married my first husband um, because little did I know that he was a street runner. Mm -hmm. Have a good one. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Yes. Um, had I not known, um, had I known um, that he was a street runner, he liked to run the street. He was, and and, and he didn't want to stay focused on being married, mm -hmm. and he still had running in his toes and he couldn't keep things in his pants and mm -hmm. all those things. Had I known that beforehand, I wouldn't have never married him. And we're, we're today, I believe, we're just trying to educate the church children yes. that are growing up. You know, we're not trying to comfort anybody, but we are trying to educate our young people, educate our church, and, and tell the leaders, y'all need to just stop preaching, save yourself for marriage, you know, you need to marry a man of God, uh, and he needs to go to the same church as you, because if he does, then y'all will be on the same path, wrong, uh -huh, uh -huh. I married the man that was inside the same church that we was in, Wow. and come to find out we was not on the same path. Wow. We wasn't trucking for the same thing. Mm -hmm. We wasn't looking for the same thing. Right. And we wasn't dedicated the same way. So he had a life and I had a life. Yeah. And people don't understand being raised in different homes means a whole lot. He was raised by a single mother and I have nothing against single mamas because I became one. Yeah. Okay. But what I'm saying is he had no structure. He had no one in the home speaking identity to him. Yeah. He had he never had a father figure in the household. His father was too busy making babies outside of the household. Ah. On his mother, he got a sister and a brother that are the same age. Wow. So what I'm saying is, and I'm not coming for anybody, but what I am trying to say is, because he didn't have that male structure at home, or he didn't have that male figure in 
his life, it caused him to not be able to be a father like he was supposed to in the beginning. Oh, he do right now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But what happened to the two, three years before, four years before him? Yeah. See, it all makes sense now to me. Yeah. You know, had he learned how to be a real man, he wouldn't have been running the streets. He would have stayed home with his wife. Uh, he wouldn't have been around the corner with the girl and her family sitting up in their house sleeping Ooh. while I'm around the corner at our house sitting on a sofa waiting for him to come home. Right. See, this is the kind of teaching y'all don't teach <laughs> in the church house. Nah, nah. I'm done. They don't teach that. They don't teach that, not at all. They don't teach that at all. And you said something that is very important that I want to be able to speak to the young men that's watching or maybe watch later, is that you have to know yourself. Come on. You have to be able to identify who you are. When I met my wife, I was literally able to say, I know what I like and I know what I dislike. And it was so funny, a uh, part of you was still like, you was firm. He was firm on what he liked. Yeah. And what he didn't like. Right. And you couldn't be wavered in your faith in what you liked. Yeah. And what you didn't like. Yeah. Like the other day, I tried to get him to taste hummus. He had had hummus before. He doesn't like hummus because it has a grit taste to it. Yeah, I don't like that greediness. Now, mind you, the hummus that I had was a better brand that I think he had, may have tasted, and it was a softer texture. But because he was firm uh -huh. on his dislikes, uh -huh. you refused to try the hummus. Mm -hmm. Even though yeah. I was like, honey, it, it did not matter if it was a honey bunny or sunny sunny. He was firm on the fact that what? You don't like hummus. The texture is not your thing. Yeah. It doesn't matter how soft or how sweet the hummus is. You don't want it because why? You know yourself enough to know that the texture is bad. That's okay. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so, I mean, and that was just, that, that's kind of like a shallow example yeah. of what we mean by knowing yourself. Right. You know, right. you have to know um, what bothers you. Oh, yeah. What makes you upset. What 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 actually you know touch your nerve yeah. in that way like, like uh, you know what what makes you upset and so you have to know yourself to to the point where uh, whoever you're in a relationship with you can say honey that's right come on you teach him right if you don't you know don't say it that way I know that you mean well but don't say that right, especially right, right. that way because this is how it makes me feel. Come on, come on, so you and so when, I, when I'm able to tell my wife, hey, this is what how it makes me feel, on, and then she will say, okay, well, let me find a brand new word so that you know I can express right, right, right. What, uh, what I'm feeling, what right. I'm sensing, or whatever the case may be, but you don't get upset, or you don't get hurt, or you don't get offended mm -hmm. by what you're saying. So that's something that's on a little deeper level um, that's what I mean by you. You have to be able to identify yourself. You you know what you like, and you know what you dislike. And and also, it's okay to ask your significant other, honey. Well, can you give me a word that will make you understand what I'm saying without causing the spirit of offense to come upon you? And to get you to the point where you're willing to go get an outfit made yeah. and wear this thing called offense. Uh -huh. So can you give me a word? Because sometimes I have to ask you, honey, can you give me a word to say to make you not feel a certain way? And now we're to the point where like, even if you say something to me, because sometimes when we first got married, my husband would say things that my ex-husband, my ex-husband would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it would really upset me and it would like really make me mad and it would cause me to shut down mm -hmm. and not want to talk. And I'd be he up there being all jolly 10 minutes later and I'm like still angry about it and then all day long angry, mm -hmm. you know, until I brought it to your attention. Mm -hmm that you have been offending me mm -hmm. because my ex-husband used to say those words. Right. And, or my mother 
Uh -huh. My father would say certain things because, um, remember the word worry? Yeah, worry. Yeah. Oh my God. So I, I'm not worried about something. I may be concerned or strongly concerned about something, mm -hmm. but I'm not worried about something. And my husband will come to me and be like, honey, well, you need to stop worrying. And oh my God. That would set the truth. Like, so, so we've learned to <laughs> communicate with one another. Yes, sir. When it comes down to certain things, because um, just, just one word, like worry. So, yeah. you know, so, so I believe this is something that we both grown in our marriage relationship because a lot of people want to get married, but you just want the, you just want the, the wedding, the celebration uh, of it all. They put too much time. They put, yeah. Too much time. You, you do too much planning yeah. for the celebration, yeah. but you won't go and spend two hundred dollars on marriage counseling. Come on. We see it every day. We have people that ask us for marriage counseling, and as soon as we tell them that they have to invest, that's something that we learn because we invested. We invested into our marriage. Yes. We invested. We listen books, DVDs. Watch this stuff on YouTube on marriage. Her name was Corny. <laughs> oh my God. And you know what? And, and my husband, that's when you found out that my strong suits mm -hmm. and my weaknesses. Yeah. He was like, oh, you don't do well in this area, do you? I was like, no, I don't. Uh -huh. I don't. And he was like, okay, so now we're going to have to. We're gonna have to work on that. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I know we gotta work on it. But that's what that marriage counselor did. Yeah. It brought out all of my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But they needed to be addressed, honey. Yes. And I think the major thing that I learned when it pertained to marriage counseling, and even right now today, is that I'm still learning to communicate with my wife. I'm still learning to communicate with her. And, and one of the things that we teach about communication is that, uh, yes, communicate with each other, but knowing how to communicate is so important, too. Because my wife, even myself, I'll just put this on myself, I can come very uh, dogmatic, very loud, and, and everything else. And I am so you, proud of you, right? <laughs> No, but thank you for being able to admit that because mm -hmm. it takes a strong person to admit mm -hmm. when they, because the word dogmatic is harsh. Yeah. That's yeah. a harsh and heavy word, mm -hmm. and it's a hard, heavy word to carry. Yeah. And to admit that you do make it have that, oh, honey, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> you see the difference happening right now live. <laughs> but no, I know that sometimes I may carry some things and and I don't intend on things to come across dog bitter or intend on right, for right. things to come across strong. But you know, uh, you know, later when we get a chance to talk, because one of the things that we learned about communication is that if we're not seeing eye to eye, okay, let's table this. I'm talking to about people in relationships yeah, now. Come on. And this, this happens with singlehood as well. Yes, come on. Because you may have a friendship with someone and y'all not seeing eye to eye on things. And you need to be able to table that thing. All right, bro. All right, sis. Let's, you know, let's table this discussion uh, for right now. But we're going to circle back around to it. That's right. And we're going to talk about it because we learned that when you talk about things in the heat of the moment, uh, you really can't get your point across. It says, da 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 Okay. Oh my God, can both of y'all just shut up? <laughs> exactly. I mean, that, that's what I be thinking. 
eventually, yeah, I just get up and I, I walk away because I'll be like, okay, this is about to turn into a little kid fight. So let me just get up, you know. Yes, absolutely. But so. if your parents are funny. Yes. You know, um, my parents used to kind of do that. You shut up thing. Uh-huh. But I don't know. My parents were different. They were, I guess they were so holy and sanctified. Uh-huh. And then too, you know, what I did, I did see that I didn't like and I knew that I did not want to bring to us was um, my my mother was... Come on in, it's fine. <laughs> God bless y'all so much. Um, we have people coming in and out. We just want to be a blessing to everybody. But um, my parents um, literally did not communicate well yeah. as husband and wife. Yeah. My dad was the kind of person, he was a very strong dude, but after a while, um, when he felt like he was not being heard, yeah. by my mother he mm-hmm. wasn't being heard she she he could never get his point and his side yeah. across he shut down and he would just sit in his chair and listen mm-hmm. and it became her show and it became wow. her time yeah. and it became her way mm-hmm. her, her will and everybody else better listen yeah. and then it got so bad that he used to teach us Wow. Just let your mom talk. Don't say nothing. Yeah, that's and good. And before I knew it, I became very angry with my father to the point where I hated him. Wow. Because I felt like he was weak. Mm-hmm. I felt like he didn't have a backbone. And I got to the point when he would tell me, Deidre, just shut up. Don't say nothing. Let your mom talk. Say what she want to say. I, and I got to the point where I started becoming very, 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 very rebellious. And one day I told him, I said, well, you're stupid. I'm not going to sit here and let her call me names and talk to yeah. me like a dog. You sit there and you take it because you her husband. But I got a car and I can get in it and I can ride away. Yeah. And, you know, for years this went on and I hated my father for years. Wow. Even from a teenager, from a child, all the way up to my teenage years, it did. I didn't really start liking my father, and my father and I did not develop a strong relationship until I got my divorce, and I was like 27 years old. Wow. 27. Yeah, I was getting ready to turn. Tw- I was 28 years old. That's when my dad and I became friends. Wow. That's when we became friends, and we became like. We became so close. We were best friends Mm -hmm. to the point where we became, it looked like we were husband and wife because I I protected him because I think he started sharing. That's when he started sharing about being being married. Mm -hmm. My dad had an accident. He broke his ankle and it put him on his back for a long time and he became not able to do much. Wow. And then when he got he got healed, he still wasn't healed. Because mm-hmm. he went back to work too fast. Yeah. And he was older. So when you break bones when you're older, you heal slow, slow, slow. Mm-hmm. So um, we just became friends then. Mm-hmm. So I learned a lot from him then. But if you think about it, I miss all those years. Yeah. I missed because my dad, when he wasn't able to speak, my mom controlled everything, so he just sat back and watched. Yeah. And I knew when we got married, I was like, mm-mm, brother. And that was something that um, I definitely didn't want to do going into our marriage. Because yes. I mean, I saw maybe not as strong as your family, but you know, that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I saw some of that, some of those things um, that I said, you know, I, I wanted to be able to voice my opinion and you at least listen. And that's it. I just needed you to listen. Yeah. Even if you didn't understand, just listen. I didn't know listen. how, because you gotta remember, yeah. I had a mother who just voiced her opinion. She didn't teach our girls to listen. Mm-hmm. She taught us everything else. She taught us how to clean, how to have nice stuff, how to take care of all this mm-hmm. beautiful stuff, and how to make money, but she didn't teach us how to listen. Yeah. So I had to learn. You taught me how to listen. Mm-hmm. God used you to do that. Now I can listen to yes. you. You know, so. Yes, and that's very important. You know, communication 
uh, when it comes down to just the family at large, we all have to learn how to listen. Uh, one of the things that, um, you know, so because I had foster children, you know, a lot of them come from all kinds of different backgrounds. They came from uh, abusive backgrounds. Yes. They came from where they were snatched from their parents right under them. And, you know, and a lot of times they felt like that they couldn't voice their opinion or they couldn't voice, uh, you know, anything. Then um, I had one foster child that I was his 22nd foster home. And I was just like, wow, that is crazy. And, and and he was able to open up because him, um, my other um, son, he was like, all the other homes I've been to, they was just in there for the money. Wow. But you actually showed love. You, yeah. I, I actually felt like you cared. Uh, my son who I adopted, he came to me with a, a trash bag. Yeah. A trash bag of just clothes. Wow. And I began to buy him stuff, just began to buy him things, you know, and so that he, he, he keep up with his appearance. My first son, my first son that came in, deep when he came in, he came to me with nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. I went out and brought him $200 worth of clothes just so that he can feel better about himself. Because his mom did. Yeah, he called your mom did. Ah. <laughs> and so communication is so key when it comes down to uh, lo loving your family, knowing your family. Um, and one of the things I'm so happy and proud about with you and your daughter, that y'all have that open line of communication. Amen. It's one of the things that I wish I had with my parents. That I, you know, I can just about talk to them about anything. And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm able to express myself to them. So that's one of the things that I lacked. Just, you know, just growing up, you know, because when in our generation, um, you were um, seen and I heard, man, you, you did not say nothing. Not say that. If you, I'm sorry, if you said something, you was labeled as that kid that know everything. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't true. It was just that we needed an outlet to speak. And our parents didn't allow us to speak. And that's something that I know that one of my older sisters, um, Keisha, she used to always say to me, she was like, you know, Daddy, well, how come I can't talk? Well, because I said so. Mm -hmm. But, and she used to get beat. Like, Keisha used to get beat. Like, something terrible. Mm -hmm. Like, you now my mom used to beat us. But if she unleashed my father up on you, and my dad had like real big, big, swollen southern hands. Yeah. That dude. I he's, probably count on one hand how many times my dad actually. Yeah, and my, my dad used to be. Disciplinary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like my mom used to beat us, but if she unleashed, unleashed my father up on you, mm -hmm. you know you fit to get a, like a real bad whooping. Mm -hmm. I mean, me and my dad got into it one time, and he slapped me so hard that he bust my lip. Jesus. Just in one slap. Wow. You know, so he's that kind of dude. And he used to beat Keisha because to, according to my mother, she had a mouth for her. Gotcha. And she was a disobedient kid because she just would want to voice her opinion. Like she would sit for hours and listen to them fuck at her. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, all right, I heard you, but can you hear me? <laughs> and my parents would, and they was that sanctified field with those supposed to be deliverance church people. You know what I mean? And you know, they want to beat the devil out of you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They are the kind of people to tell you, you ain't got to go to the abortion clinic. I'll throw you down the steps. I am the doctor. You know, they, they used to say stuff like that to us. Wow. And it, it was really bad. It was really bad. You know, so, um, and then, you know, I had one other sister who said, I'll never beat my children. My Misha, she'll, she'll beat her kids. Mm -hmm. You know, because we used to get beat. You know, kids need some work. Jesus Christ of Nether, Latter day Saints. Don't you talk about my kids and that used to be call them out, but yeah, they shot too. But she always said it because she's the youngest one, that she full of the devil. <laughs> she be she be G. She, but she used to say that. She said, I'm when I get older, I'm not beating my kids because mommy and daddy used to beat us so much. It's the difference between punishment. 
Hey, then be. The difference between whooping. Well, we didn't have that time out stuff. My parents' hands and the stitching cord. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we didn't have switches. We had stitching cords. Oh, yes, yeah, now we do all that. So, yeah. my parents used to take, yeah, she sure. used to buy switch, like stitching cords from the uh -huh. store, uh -huh. like them orange cords that we got uh -huh. over there. Uh -huh. She used to buy like stuff like that, like stitching cords. Uh -huh. Or she used to buy them, you know how we used to do double dutch? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My mom used it's to buy cords. Yeah. yeah, she yeah. used to use them, them, them kind of cords. Yeah. And she would beat us with them. That's abuse. I used to get, I used to have webs all over my back. That's abuse. And then she would then she would take um um alcohol. Oh Jesus. And rub them on my back just so I can get rid of the webs and stuff. Oh God. I, I got some. Yes, yeah, we, 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 we do all that. I mean, we, we got the house shoes. We got. The I went the house shoes. You black. <laughs> house shoes. I wish. And then sometimes like she would wait till we get in the tub. And call herself preaching a word or whatever she called herself doing, uh -huh. telling a story or whatever. Yeah. And we'd be like, she lying. And people would be like, yo, y'all are so rude. You shouldn't talk about your mama. We'd be like, shut up, whatever. You don't know if she talk about you too. Oh. You know, <laughs> that's how we were because we saw the lies. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. As parents, y'all have to be very careful about how. Treat people and yeah. how you say stuff behind your kids because they're gonna tell on you. You know, I'm old enough to tell on my parents. Oh, we didn't care. Yeah, That's why we stayed in trouble all the time. I do want to say one thing funny. We're gonna move on from, from spankings and whoopings. <laughs> so I remember my grandmother, Madea, she was like, because my brother was acting up. Uh -huh. And so um, she was like, go get me a bill. I'm about to whoop this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And so I was like, yes, I went inside my aunt bedroom. And you remember them belts that had the, um, they had the, um, oh God, the spikes on them. The belts that you wear with the spikes. I brought the belt out with the spikes. She said, fool. <laughs> I'm trying to punish the boy, not kill him. <laughs> she didn't want somebody to die. Yo, me and my That's bad. That's not good. Yeah. yeah, see? Yeah. But you know, I wanted to talk to you about kids. Yes. My daughter loves you like so much. Oh, I know. It's like, terrible. It's so bad. I really did our birth her. Because she asked me. Yeah. She said, I know it's not true, but I need to know, is Shannon really my father? And I was like, well, if you know it's not true that he's your dad, well, why are you asking? I think deep down inside, she really wanted you to be her dad. Wow. Because. Wow. You know, she she loves her father, her biological father, who she is with right now, but she loves him. She loves him, and she loves her stepmom, but you bring something to the table that he don't bring, and it's called T-I-M-E, T-I-M-E, yeah. time, sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get it together, T-I-M-E, yeah. time, yeah. and a lot of times we don't put the time yeah. in with our children, and that's what I love about our marriage because we, you have opened our eyes as the, the man of the house, the king. You opened our eyes to travel. Yeah. You opened our, you spoke into my life 
you told you called me who I was, mm -hmm. the prophet, mm -hmm. and I didn't know mm -hmm. that I was the prophet. Right. You know, so this is why a man in the house, and she's texting us right now. Oh. Hey guys, how's your day been? <laughs> this is her right now. It, this is how much she loves us. Um, anything exciting happening? Yeah, we're talking about you. <laughs> Go to Facebook. We're talking about you right now. No. Yeah, <laughs> but I love you for that, and I just want to say thank you. And I'm, you know, I'm done. But I just wanted to say thank you for yeah. being my husband, being my best friend, teaching me, speaking into my life, wow. telling me that I am beautiful because I didn't think I was beautiful. I didn't think I was anointed. Yeah. I didn't think I could hear God. Literally, when I explained to him, to him when I first met him who I was, I said I was crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I called hearing from God me being crazy mm -hmm. because that's the way I was taught that I was crazy because I could hear conversations from abroad. I would be in New Jersey and hear conversations in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and then I would go to church and tell people what they said about me or what they said about something or what they was talking about, and people would literally get angry at me. I literally got in trouble. I knew stuff that my mother was saying when I would walk in the door. I could walk in the door, and the Holy Ghost would allow me to hear everything that she just got finished talking about. And I would say something, and everybody in the room was looking at me like, wait a minute, you weren't here. So I was labeled as crazy, but you taught me that I wasn't crazy. I just heard from God real good. Yeah. I could hear good. And I can see behind. See, I can, God has allowed me to see behind people's eyes. I can, I can see what you tried to say. I can hear what you didn't say. You know, and I praise God for you as the man of God. This is why it's important for us to have a real man of God in the household. Because let me tell you, the man of God speaks. He sets the atmosphere yes. for the household. You set the atmosphere in our household. You set the standard, and it's up to us to follow. And follow it, you know, and I, I praise God because I actually enjoy following you as my pastor, but my husband, I enjoy it. I, I really enjoy it, and I will follow you to the moon and back. If you said God said, and, and because you don't use God said so much, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to follow you. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, for the few of you that's online, that's watching us right now, oh, man, look at what are the few Jesus. Uh, if you have any comments that you want to um, ask a question before we end um, our love and um, family um, session, make sure that you um, type, the, type, type the question in the comments. Yes. We're going to make sure we answer any questions that you guys may have. For those of you that are here, if you happen to have any questions, um, make sure you ask as well. Um, so, one of the things that I wanted to, something else I wanted to point out um, to you was, uh, since we was on the subject of Sierra, um, one thing is that I never asked her to call me dad. Oh, yeah. I never asked her to call no, me dad. No, you didn't. no, you did. And, 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 I, and I learned that uh, even with some of my children, you know, I never told them to call me dad or pop pop or pop or anything of that nature. It's just something that um, I guess was proven. I guess I guess I proved myself in that matter. And yes. when Sierra, <laughs> when she um, when she wrote me that letter, um, did she write you a letter or did she text you? No, she wrote me a letter. She wrote you a letter. She wrote me I a thought letter. She had when oh. we was in Hamilton. Oh she wrote me a letter. She said how much she loved and appreciated me and that she called me dad. And I cried like a little baby. And wait a minute, when you proposed to me, uh -huh. you proposed to me in 2017 when the ball dropped, and I texted her because she was with my mom okay. at the time. And I had texted her, I said, yo, um, uh, Mr. Shannon had asked me to marry him. She was like, yeah, 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 I'm so excited about him. She was like, now I can call him dad. I remember that she said, because she talked to you up on the phone, mm -hmm. and you fell to the floor and started crying. Because, mm -hmm. like, she she let you know that eventually she's going to start calling you dad. And it just, like, 
I remember it just melted your heart. I felt yeah. so bad. I said, oh, Shannon, you I'm I'm crying. Salty. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so communication um, is key, and I know we won't go be able to get through all of it. Okay. Um, but uh, communication with your spouse, communication in your relationships, yeah. um, communication with your family is so key, and how we communicate is just so key. Yeah. And I'm so glad that um, we still learning to communicate with one another, but oh, yeah. it wasn't like when we first met. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for allowing me to be able to uh, speak and you listen. You know, although sometimes it's like, mm, okay, yeah, I'm listening, but at least you still let me get it out. Because <laughs> sometimes that's all, I just, I just need the release. And I thank God that you also allow Sierra to do it. It was something that I allowed my kids to do because I noticed that um, they felt like they didn't have a voice. And, and because they didn't have a voice, they would lash out. And so, um, so that's when I developed the honest box. I developed the honest box yes. with the kids. And so, the kids. <laughs> so, so I, I said, okay, listen, um, this is honest box time. So if you guys happen to need to say something, um, please be honest, tell me. And so then a lot of times they'll say, okay, I have something honestly to say. Um, can I cuss this one time? And they was like, I'll say, okay, cool, just one time. All right, cool. So I was that kind of parent that I was like, all right, I want to open up and allow them, because they don't know about no God. And the pastor said, you better not sit here and cuss it. <laughs> You know, but they were able to pour out and they were able to share and I was able to listen to see where they was coming from. So uh, I want to encourage everyone that's online and everybody that's here today. Don't let your kids cuss, but I think what you're trying to say is just, you want them to open up. And want some, them to open yeah, up, yes. Sometimes you have to take the mommy hat off. And us as mommies, we got to remember, we do, we do um, wear several hats. Yeah. We're the nanny, we're the... The, the baker, the, the cooker, you know, you're a little bit of the grandmama, you, you're everything. Right. And sometimes I have to take that hat, the mommy hat off yeah. and put my girlfriend hat on and just let my daughter talk because she's 14. Yeah. And she's experiencing life, you know, and now she's kind of experiencing her friends who have boyfriends. Yeah. And she's like, mom, it's cool that they got boyfriends and stuff, but I don't appreciate them kissing in front of me. I don't like that. That does not make me feel good. And if had I been her mom, I would have been like, first of all, let me tell y'all something. You need to get away from them girls because they're fast. Mm -hmm. But that's not what she really needed to hear at the time. She really needed to just vent that she felt uncomfortable. So what I did is I listened to her, and then when I talked to her, I said, Sierra, I